Hey guys, Garrett here. It's been four years since I installed my DIY geothermal system, or if you want to get technical about it, it's actually a ground source heat pump. But it's been four years at this point. I've been living with it, the whole family has, and I want to give you what I think is good about it, what I think is bad about it, uh, was it worth it to me, and would I recommend it to you guys? Let's start with all of the good things. Number one, there is no outside unit. So there's no noise pollution outside. I think that's a fantastic thing. Number two, it's very efficient and it doesn't matter at what point within the year it is. We've had temperatures down to minus 18 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. My system didn't care, it just performed and that's because it's drawing its heat from about 10 feet down in the earth. And that remains unchanged pretty much by any of the air temperature that's outside. So that is huge peace of mind. There is absolutely nothing that I have to worry about. And even if I did, I do have backup heat strips, but they've never turned on. The maintenance on my system is also extremely easy to do. If you wanna see how I maintain my system, check out this video right here. But there's very little to it, and I've had zero breakdowns in the time that I've had it. I've also had zero problems with the entire system since I've installed it. It just works. On top of that, my power bills are pretty darn cheap. I have an insulated concrete form house, so it's a very efficiently built house and it's 6,000 square feet, so it's 3,000 on the main level, 3,000 in the basement. So it's a big house and all of it is conditioned and you would think, you know, something like that should have a three to $400 average cost per month to actually heat and cool and just electrify this entire house. Well, for me, it's only $100 per month. Keep in mind, I do have a five kilowatt solar system offsetting some of that energy usage as well. Not all of the energy is being used by the HVAC system. Of course, we have TVs and lights and cooking and, you know, refrigerators, and I have a 3,000 square foot shop as well. So it's all on the same bill, but it's only $100 a month. I think that's freaking incredible. We don't have propane, we don't have natural gas, so that is literally the only bill that we get to live in this house. Another benefit of the system is if you have a D superheater within this, it can actually send some of that heat that it is trying to dump into the ground, especially during the uh, summer months, it will send it right over to your water heater and offset a lot of the water heating costs for your house. So there really aren't many bad things about it, but we'll discuss a couple. Number one would definitely be the cost of the system. Now I did this myself, so I was able to keep those costs way down. And relatively speaking, it sounds like a lot of money that I spent on this system, but when I did it, the federal government was given a 30% tax break on this, so I was able to write off basically 30% of the cost dollar for dollar onto my taxes. So that brought it way down. My local utility also gave me a rebate on it. So if you wanna see the exact numbers of what my system cost, check out this video right here. I broke down everything. But the moral of the story is my system, because of the way that I did it, cost the equivalent of what a typical air to air heat pump would have cost. So from day one, I was already caught up with what a typical system would have cost. I didn't have access to natural gas, so I couldn't put that system in anyway. And propane is just incredibly expensive to begin with. And it's very volatile throughout the year, so that just wasn't even an option. So for me, it had to be something that was all electric, and I wanted it to be as energy efficient as possible. So if for you guys, if you are having somebody do it, it could be very, very expensive, probably two to three, maybe even four times the cost of what just a typical heat pump system would cost. But for me, it was the same. The second thing would be there is a little bit of noise associated with these systems. Check this out. I'm turning this on. This is one of the systems, and of course I'm standing right next to it. So that's the loudest it's going to be. It's in one of my utility rooms.
as you can hear, that compressor kicking on is kind of noisy and there is a hum associated with it running. You got to remember that the typical system, that compressor is in that outside unit. Whereas with this ground source heat pump, it is inside. So the cabinet itself is very well insulated and it has a lot of noise canceling properties about it, but it still makes noise. So you have to be mindful of where you put this system in your house. Try to keep it away from bedrooms. That one that I just showed you is actually right below my son's bedroom. And it does bleed through the floor into his bedroom. It's not bad. Uh, to mitigate it, I actually screwed some extra pieces of sheetrock just straight to the bottom of that floor to uh, absorb some more of that sound and it did help. But if you have no other noise going on in that bedroom, you do hear that system kick on and off. However, it's not so loud that it makes me hate the system. It's uh, just something to be mindful of. The third thing I don't like about these ground source heat pumps is if you do have to modify something, especially out in the loop field, which is out in your yard, it's kind of tough to do. Uh, if you didn't size this thing correctly, you may need to add another loop. So the nice thing is that you actually can do that. You can add more loops, get more capacity out of your system if you accidentally undersized it. But it is disruptive. You're gonna have to dig up your yard again and bury new loops and then tie them all in. But it's doable. It's something that you can do. I didn't have to worry about that. Everything was sized perfectly to start with, so I'm just good to go. But if you find that you do have a problem where you're putting too much heat into the ground during the summer or taking too much out in the winter, uh, there is a way to remedy that. So designing your system up front the right way is definitely the most important thing that you can do with this entire thing. If it was me and let's say I'm moving out to a farm and of course I don't have uh, natural gas or propane or whatever and everything has to be electric and it's a hundred year old farmhouse. Well, I don't think I would put this system in because that probably doesn't have any insulation in it, which means that the whole system would be running all the time and then you'd probably be saturating that ground. It'd get real expensive because to overcome that saturation, you have to add more loops. So I'm not saying the system is the best thing for everybody out there, but it is a really good system if designed correctly and paired with a house that is relatively efficient. My house is extremely efficient, so it doesn't run all that terribly often, but when it does, it performs flawlessly. So living in this house for the last four years, knowing what I know about this system, would I do it again? You betcha. My house, my location, the design of this entire system is perfect for this application. So absolutely. Would I recommend it to you guys? Well, I have in the past and I continue to at this point. It's all going to be dependent upon what kind of house you're putting it in, what uh, proximity to the different utilities you have, and if you can afford it, and especially if you can do a bunch of the work yourself. The payback period is going to be dependent upon how much you actually spend on this system. So if you can do a bunch of the work yourself, that payback period is going to be much, much shorter, or in my case, instantaneous. The ongoing maintenance with this system is extremely minimal. You know, it's just, it's a good system. Is it a good application for everybody? No, you know, you're gonna have to look at your situation specifically and weigh the pros and cons of all the different systems available. But for me, where half of the time we're cooling and half of the time we're heating, it's awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.